Yes. <laughs> Sometimes we point over there, and they come from over there. Thank you. My name is George.、Um, we, read, we, we read a lot of books about、um, we all have a purpose. If we really have got one,、um, how can we find our purpose? Well, your purpose isn't about what you do. Your purpose is about who you are, who you be, how you feel. In other words, your creation is you. Isn't that interesting? You're not here to create things, although you will. You're not here to create circumstances, although you do. You're here to explore the environment for the evolution of you. What you are creating is you. You see, you're creating you and your interaction with all that is. And so, when people say, "I want to know what my purpose is," we say, "Well, what your purpose is is alignment, and the results will be all kinds of different things." If you say, "I can feel that my purpose today is to look for things that cause me to feel good, and in doing so, I align with that broader perspective," then you realize that in that alignment, you keep getting to fulfill the newest version of what life has caused you to put into your vibrational escrow. Esther remembers being a very young schoolgirl, and she wanted to learn to type. And the head of the school didn't want her to learn to type. He wanted her to go learn how to cook and how to make aprons and things of that nature. And Esther said, "I already know how to cook, and I already know how to make aprons. And now I want to do this." And he said, "You are too young to do this. I cannot allow it." And Esther said, "I really want to do this, and I will hound you every day until you allow me to do it because it's something that I was born to do." Now, why would Esther feel such a compulsion to learn to type? Little did she know how well it would benefit her. Little did she know how. How much of her future experience would be benefited from something like that? You see, it was a passion or a compulsion that she just could not let go of. And so, what we are getting at is, if Esther had known in the early days of her receiving of us that she would be standing in front of those like you in all of her weirdness. We want you to know that this is not weird. This is the most natural thing in the world. But from the perspective of so many, it is not seen as the most natural thing in the world. Esther would have made sure that she was never standing in this spot. In other words, she could not have conceived of this from the place that she was standing. But the point that we're making with you is that from wherever you stand, you're reaching for more. And if you allow yourself alignment with that more, then the new vantage point allows you to reach further still and further still. And so it is not a purpose; it's a steady stream of purposes as far as you can allow yourself to go. It's not that the source within you has this viewpoint that you must stretch to catch up with. It's that your life is causing you to reach for the new viewpoint, and when you catch up, then your life causes you to reach for a new viewpoint. It's just a steady, never-ending unfolding of new desires and new accomplishments and new alignments. Your purpose is joy. The result will be expansion. Most humans have it backward. They think that their purpose is expansion, and they're willing to forfeit joy for it. You see, and then they never get it because if you forfeit your awareness of your emotions and you forfeit your joy, then you cannot have your expansion. And so. As you realize that the basis of your experience is absolute freedom, you are so free you can choose bondage, and your quest, your desire, the desire that you were born with, is joy. And when you are wise enough to let that be your focus, to let the desire for joy be that which you are focused upon, let that be your quest, then never-ending, joyful, unending, 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 joyful expansion is your life. You see. You didn't say, "I'll go forth, and when the time is right, I'll create that." You said, "I'll go forth, and life will stir up what I want to create next, and then I will." And then life will stir up what I want to create next, and then I will. And if anyone asks you why you're doing it, you say, "For the fun of it, for the joy of it, for the thrill of it." For the joy of it, for the thrill of it, for the expansion of it, for the feeling of it, for the feeling of it. Do you know that there isn't anything that anybody wants, whether it's a material object or a relationship or a pile of money or a circumstance or an event? There is nothing that anyone wants for any other reason that they think they will feel better in the having of it. No exceptions, you see. You are joy-based. 
Freedom is your basis and joy is your quest. And expansion is your inevitable result. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Thank you.